welcome to the show. Hello, 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 hello. And to the show, we'll come a <laughs> Well, what have you done to Stanley this week, then, eh? Oh, well, he's my technical advisor. And this is his technical advisor set. He's a comedy consultant, you know. Yes, who's a little comic chopstick. <laughs> <laughs> What's he going to advise you on? Oh, my comedy script. Jokes and gags and witty wheezes and that sort of thing, you know. Mm. Yes, I'm doing a charity concert in the town hall tomorrow night. I'm the compere. Compare? Yes, that's from the French, you know. Com meaning how and pair meaning father. Uh, I'm a sort of how's your father. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he must have heard it. Mm. <laughs> well, I hope you've got some good cracks in your script. What? 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 I've got more cracks in my script than the M1. <laughs> well, come on then, give us an example of one of your funny gags. Right, <clears throat> Stanley. Yes, you fool. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see. I see. What do you say? What do you call a politician who falls asleep in the Houses of Parliament? I don't know. What do you call a politician who falls asleep in the Houses of Parliament? A bedtime Tory. <laughs> a bedtime Tory! Boom, boom! That was a good one. Look at him. Look, he's in hysterics. Look, look. Oh, that guy will kill the audience tomorrow night, you know. God. Mm, it'll probably make them feel very ill. Yes. Huh? Look, good scripts are very important to a comedian. They certainly are. I wish I had one. <laughs> If a comedian's script isn't funny, what does he do? He goes on television. <laughs> he gets new writers. Oh, my Uncle Fred gets that. Gets what? New writers. Very painful, you know. Goes right out of his brush. Oh. New script writers, you nut. Oh. Have you got any good puns? Any what? Puns. A pun is a play on words. Yeah. And a pun is even better if it's topical. Current events. Oh, a current pun. <laughs> <laughs> a current pun. Stanley, don't laugh so hard. You'll do yourself a mischief. <laughs> Now, when you get on that stage tomorrow night, Basil, I want you to deliver your gags properly. Yes. It's no good mumbling. No, I won't. You've got to open your mouth and really throw yourself into it. I'm a comedian, not a blooming acrobat. Come on. <laughs> now, that's the trouble with some comedians. Yes. They don't get any laughs because the audience don't hear what they're saying. They just stand there and mutter instead of talking out. I know. Half of them can't tell talk from mutter. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom, boom! <laughs> oh, oh, I've taken his hooter off. <laughs> now, here's an act, Basil that really knows how to sell the material. Are they men's outfitters? <laughs> <laughs> it's our special guest stars, Prelude! <laughs> ah, <hey! laughs> I want to rock you with my 
Basil, I think we're in for a really comfortable evening. Oh, yes. Drinks and sandwiches laid on, colour television. Yes, and we're getting paid for it as well, just for minding somebody's dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mrs forster has got a lovely home, though, hasn't she? She certainly has, very posh. Cool, I see. Look at that big bowl of grapes on the sideboard. Oh, yeah. I wonder who's ill. People don't just have grapes when somebody's ill, you know. Well, that's the only time we see any grapes in our house. <laughs> I wonder what kind of dog we're going to mind. Well, on the phone, Mrs Fawcett kept calling him a baby. It oh. must be some kind of lap dog. Oh, I hope not. My Auntie Elsie had a lap dog. Yeah? Blooming thing. Every time I sat on its lap, it bit me. <laughs> ah, Mr North. Oh, ah. And ah. Basil. Oh, it's so kind of you to mind my baby for oh, me. Oh, it's a pleasure, Mrs Fawcett. We like mm -hmm. dogs, don't we, Basil? Yes, and we like the money too, Mrs Dorset. Fawcett. Yeah, it's near enough. Uh, Mrs Corset. <laughs> Mrs. Forsyth. I'm sorry. What do you call your dog, madam? He's called King. Oh. And he has his own little plaything. Really? Now, this is one of his favourites. Uh -huh. He loves to play with a brush. He's not going to play with my brush, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure that Basil and King will get on splendidly I hope together. So. <laughs> now, I'll put this here. Yes. Yeah, that will keep him happy. There. Oh, and I have a list here of food that he has to have at nine o'clock. Oh, and King loves to watch the television. <laughs> so is she taking the, um... <laughs> it's all right, Basil. Goodbye for now. See you at ten. Bye-bye, Mrs. Strainit. <laughs> Mrs. Fawcett. Well, it's the same thing. Uh, oh, this is marvellous. Six hours at 20p an hour, that's uh, 120. <laughs> <laughs> Just for sitting and watching television. Yeah, <laughs> but don't forget, Basil, we've got to look after King as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fancy paying someone to sit with a toy dog. Cool. Still, as long as it makes her happy. <laughs> he's a cute little chap, though, isn't he? Yes, he's a cheeky little face there. Oh, look, he does tricks. Look, <laughs> he's sitting up. <laughs> look at his brush going. Look. <laughs> Hey, look, Basil. What? We'd better sit him here, because she says he likes to watch telly. <laughs> likes to watch telly? You're as bad as she is. <laughs> Likes watching television. <laughs> he must be a watchdog. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wonder what's on telly, then. Oh, yeah. They have a lot of quiz shows these days, don't they? Yeah. I like the intellectual quiz shows best, you know, yeah. like Mastermind. Oh, I'd like to be on that programme. What, you? The brain of Britain? And why not? I've got more brains in my head than most people have in their little fingers. <laughs> Hey, what's that new political quiz? Oh, I heard about that. Yes, the leaders of our three major political parties sit around and discuss their policies. And we have to guess what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. You made that up. Yes, I did. Jolly good it was. <laughs> Just a little white fib, you know. Yeah, you know what happened to people who tell stories, don't you? Yeah, they go on Jack and Ori. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's the matter with little Kingy? Ah, do you want to go walkies? Do you? You want your ding-dings, don't you? You're hungry. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what sort of food they give to a toy dog. Hey, she left the food list, Basil. Oh, yes. Let's have a look. Here it is. Yeah. King's dinner. Yeah. Give King two pounds of meat, 24 huh? dog biscuits and a large dish of doggy-woggy. What? <laughs> if you stuff two pounds of meat, 24 dog biscuits and a big dish of doggy-woggy into him, you bung up his works. <laughs> 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 you ready for your ding-dings, Kinky? Uh... Oh, What's I that? see. That's little Kinky asking for his ding-dings. Cool! Little Kingy must be growing up. His voice is changing. No, it wasn't, Basil. It came from over here. Oh, we're going to investigate. <laughs> you all right, Kingy? You hey, Basil, we've been mining the wrong dog. What do you mean? Look. What? This oh! is King. <laughs> oh, look at the size of it. God. It wouldn't take many of those to make a dozen, would it? He's an old English sheepdog, Basil. Oh, well, well. Come on. <laughs> City. <laughs> oh, he looks more like a wall to wall. Hey, watch it, get off! <laughs> Come on. Oh. Sit down. He looks more like a wall to wall fitted carpet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is King, all right, Basil. Ah, how do you do, Your Majesty? <laughs> <laughs> Look, it says on his lead, yeah. King Hotspur of Amblegate. Oh, hello, King Hotspur of Amblegate. I'm Prince Basil of Notting Hill Gate. <laughs> <laughs> get off! <laughs> Hey, fancy Mrs. Fawcett calling him a baby, eh? Yes, cool. Oh, I imagine trying to get a nappy on that. <laughs> <laughs> How do you find which end is which? Cool. Hey, come on, you're in my place. Get over there. Go on, what, Mr. Roy, watch out. Go on. <laughs> okay, what are you doing? Get off. Oh. <laughs> hey, I wonder where he sleeps, Basil. I'd say anywhere he blooming well likes. <laughs> <laughs> I say he's a bit bigger than Mrs. Brown's dog, isn't he? What, you mean that dachshund? Yes, I, I nearly bought a dachshund once, you know. Yeah? Yes, I heard a man on the wireless singing, get along, little doggy, get along, little doggy, get along, little doggy, get along. <laughs> you get, 
How do you like that? Oh, look at him. How's that for a spontaneous outburst of indifference? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are awful, but I like you. Boom, boom! <laughs> boom, boom! Hey, Adrian, boom, boom! <laughs> the eyes are beauty, though, isn't he? Oh, yes. I bet he's a thoroughbred, Basil. Thoroughbred? Yeah, from a first-class litter. Oh. Very expensive. I know, you have to put an eight and a half P on them now, you know. First class litter, not letter. Oh, I beg your pudding. Now, yeah, he must be a show dog, though. Oh, yes. Oh, well, he's not showing much at the moment, is he? Uh, <laughs> I say, King! King, you still in there? <laughs> you know, I, I reckon he must be worth at least 500 pounds. 500 pounds? How can a dog save that much? Yeah. <laughs> Old English sheep dogs are very valuable. Oh, my Auntie Elsie had one of those, you know. Yeah. Bought it when it was a puppy. When she saw it in the pet shop, it was going cheap, and that's very unusual. Yeah, it is. Sheep dogs don't usually go cheap, they go woof woof! Oh, ow, 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 ow! Go, go! Oh, he got his head right. Oh, God, it was painful that was. God. <laughs> Come on then, give us your paw. What do you want me paw for? Not you, I'm talking to King. I'm asking him to shake hands. Come on, King. Oh. Come on then. Come Isn't on. that marvellous? One word from you, and he does what he likes. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I wonder if he begs. Living in a posh gaff like this, he doesn't have to. He's got everything he needs. <laughs> Hello, King. Who's a shaggy little bumpster? Who's a shaggy little doggy? Who's a shaggy little doggy? Oh, dear. Uh, he doesn't say much, does he, Basil? No, but he thinks a lot. <laughs> I bet he only chases parked cars. <laughs> I bet if he caught one of those minis, he'd take it home and bury it in the garden. I'm sure I've seen him on telly, you know. Yes, me too. Have you painted any good homes lately? <laughs> Like a spark. Look at him. He's filled with emotion. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Basil, do you think he might like to watch telly? Oh, I'm sure he would. But how can he with his barnet hanging down over his little mince pie? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll soon fix that. What are you going to do? I'm going to take his hair out of his eyes. Oh. But, heck, I wouldn't fancy giving him a bath, would you? No, I'd put him through the car wash. <laughs> <laughs> How's bum, that, then? Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> He's a lovely little fella. He's a lovely fella. How's that, then, Basil? Yeah, I... Hey. You can't expect a fella like him to go around with a bow of ribbon in his hair. People talk, you know, don't they, Kingy? Eh? We'll have to change your name to Queenie. <laughs> <laughs> it's only so he can watch telly, Basil. Oh, I see. Hey, I'll put it on. All right. <clears throat> that new serial will be on later. Oh, yes. Have you seen The Invisible Man? What a daft question. How can anyone see an invisible man? <laughs> What's this rubbish? Ah, oh, it's that new talent programme, Strange Faces. What do you think of it so far? Rubbish! <laughs> I couldn't agree more. What a load of cods, what a... God. And now, friends, contestant number four, Harold Haskins, a trite scraper from Darlington, singing that lovely old song, Trees. Quick, turn the sound down! Quick! Turn the sound down. Quick! You can't sing Trees in front of King! Why not? That caused a major disaster. <laughs> Look at him! He's gone all breathless and pantless. Ah, <laughs> oh, I think he likes you, though, Basil. I hope he doesn't like me too much. He hasn't had his dinner yet. <laughs> hey, where's his little doggy friend? Here huh? he is. Oh, look Let's at put it that. Ah, oh. Don't they make a lovely couple, eh? Yeah, a real couple of pals, aren't yeah. they? Just like you and me, Mr Roy. Just like you and me, Basil. With a pal by your side You've got someone to share all your troubles Whenever they come your way Together you face up to life In an optimistic style with a smile when you drop your trouble, looky duck. duck You'll have a shoulder to lean up on right. Someone to give you a hand Someone who will understand To help you do the things you should have done Sharing a burden with you Telling you what you should do With, with a pal to confide in You know that whatever happens You're never to let you down Ask his advice And he'll help you to decide Find the right way to go You're a lucky so-and-so With an honest to goodness good old pal By your side <laughs> Well, Basil, it's time once You've again... You've been that song, Rotten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all right, you laughing. <laughs> it's time once again 
for another thrilling episode in our serial story, Bulldog Basil's Secret Service Man. I say, Mr. Roy, yeah? can Ticker listen to the story? I mean, he only heard one sentence last week, you know. Yeah, as long as he keeps quiet. Oh, he will, he will. Come on, Ticker, come on, come and listen to the story. Yeah, it's a good little boy. There we are, stay, stay. Ah, nice little chap, isn't he, Mr. Roy? He's not as valuable as King, the English sheepdog, but he's my pal. Aren't you, Ticker? Yeah, boy, right, quiet. <laughs> quiet! Shut your little boat shoot. That's right. <laughs> you may continue. Thank you. It's a pleasure. <laughs> the Adventures of Bulldog Basil, episode six. He doesn't know he's a mongrel, you know. Bulldog Basil isn't a mongrel. Shut up. I'm talking about him. Anyway, mongrels are usually very good dogs, even though they don't cost a lot of money. My friend Freddy told me that he paid £50 for his dog. Part collie and part bull. <laughs> Which part was bull? The part about the fifty pounds. <laughs> <laughs> no interruptions, please. <laughs> Basil, <laughs> shut your little mouth and keep it shut. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you do what I was told. You said shut your little mouth and keep it shut. You said so. I did. I couldn't help it if your finger was in the way, could I? <laughs> Don't you want to know what happened to Basil? Basil. 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 That's a funny name. <laughs> My friend's got a funnier name than that, you know. Yeah? His parents picked it out of the phone book. What was his name? Halifax Building Society. <laughs> now, try to concentrate on what, what happened in the story last week. Righty-ho, Stripey. <laughs> Would you like a recap? No, thanks. I'm trying to give them up. Come on, come on. <laughs> Basil had just learned from his old Chinese friend, Ah Chu, yeah. that his arch-enemy, Chu Fan Mu... Chu Fan Mu, he's a baddie. A baddie! Ooh, a baddie! <laughs> Silly old Mu. Chu Fan Mu had taken a country mansion in Surrey as the headquarters of the dreaded Ying Tong. Ilaipo! Ilaipo! <laughs> Basil's <laughs> groom, Henry Winterbottom... What a winter name. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> had brought Come further on. information that the mansion in Hindhead was called Milcom House. Yes. And it was from there that Chu Fan Mu would attempt to annihilate the British government on New Year's Day. I wonder if he really is going to get rid of the government. Or is he just trying to cheer us up? I wish he'd get rid of you. Ooh, Shamo! <laughs> You're not like this when we're pansy planting together. Come on, come on. The point is, Muse Basil, how does he intend to carry out this dastardly deed? Dastardly deed! This ha deed of dastardly! <laughs> Have heard rumors, said Archu, that villain Chu Fan Mu has invented infernal machines. Not! You don't mean the first jukebox. <laughs> Will you listen? Not if you're going to play that jukebox. Whoa, I can't stand the bass, you know. Vroom, 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 vroom. Send shockwaves right up me brush. <laughs> the infernal machine is not a jukebox. Well, what sort of machine is it? Well, listen and you'll find out. Oh, right. What kind of machine is it, asked Basil? Yes, I did, didn't I? <laughs> not you. <laughs> Archie replied, Machine said to be capable of disintegrating matter from long distance. Oh, yes. Basil knew that Chu Fan Mu was a brilliant scientist. Yeah. That's possible, he said. Chu has the scientific knowledge to develop such a fiendish device. Yes. Basil turned to his groom. Yeah. Winterbottom, he That's said. That's a very chilly name. <laughs> <laughs> Get back to the house as quickly as you can and tell Lee Pat to prepare for an immediate journey. It'd be quicker if he telephoned. Basil, it's Limehouse. It's 1899, and they didn't have telephones in Chinatown in those days. It's just as well. The directory would be full of wrong numbers. <laughs> <laughs> full of wrong numbers! Boom, boom! <laughs> ah, boom, boom, you in a minute. Don't you hit me. <laughs> and check on the quickest route to Hindhead in Surrey, Basil continued. Yeah. Do you know the best way to Milcom House? Yes, you need a tiny bucket and a very low stool. <laughs> Talking of a tiny bucket and a very low stool, that's the best way to milk a mouse. <laughs> he was asking the best way to milk a house. Oh, pardon me for the sit Yes, Governor, replied uh, Henry Winterbottom. <laughs> you need a tiny bucket and a very low stool. Hey, hang about. I'll do the jokes. <laughs> Despite the urgency of the situation, Basil chuckled at Henry's whimsicality. <laughs> 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 Sound like a chicken, didn't I? <laughs> like most cockneys, Winterbottom had the sharp and ready wit of all EastEnders. Yes. And Basil appreciated Henry for what he was. Yes. One of the greatest wits in London. That's not very nice, is it? What isn't nice? Calling our Henry one of the greatest twits in London. <laughs> I didn't say twit, I said wit. Oh, all right. There's no need to get your foundations in the full order. <laughs> you do get your knickers in a knot. I do <laughs> Get my knitters in, in a... Knitters in a knock! <laughs> Stop confusing!
killing me! Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Come along. <laughs> and You're Winterbottom. You're so beautiful. <laughs> and Winterbottom. My God, that's a cold name. <laughs> Tell Lee Pat to include the box of disguises. Disguises? Yes, it was things like this, Basil. What's that? Well, this is my theatrical makeup kit, you see. Oh. And I've got false beards, a yeah. moustache, yeah. some glasses there, oh, I see. and a nose, and even false lips. Look. Cool. Mummy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's lovely. Oh, that does interest me. That Basil does... often assumed a different personality by yes. masterly application of grease paint and false hair while working undercover. That must be exciting. I'd love to be an undercover man. Really? Yes. All right then. Oh. <laughs> Your wish will be. What are, you, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Well, you wanted to be an undercover man, so now you're undercover. Well, that's <laughs> nice. Cool. I don't think you'd like me anymore. <laughs> Winterbottom hurried off me. on his errand, and Basil bade farewell to his Chinese friend, Archu. Cheerio, me old China. <laughs> Rest assured, old friend, he said, shaking Archu by the hand. I'll track down that villain. We British won't stand for his anarchy. And when I do find him, I'll make the scoundrel pay. Yeah, that's it. Make him pay the British way. What's the British way? A pound down and 10p a week. <laughs> <laughs> so saying, Basil left the Fulton eating house and rejoined his butler, Sailor Harris. Harris, he said, our quarry's down in Hindhead. Now you and I must go and find that villain, Chu Fan Mu. And the Ying Tong in light bulb. <laughs> And the beer lady. <laughs> and be lady for honorable kung fu punch up glass of <laughs> What do you think you look like, Basil? Oh, how did you know it was me? <laughs> me wearing kung fu disguise with baldy bumps and cuckoo eyes. <laughs> What comes next, glass offer? <laughs> I don't know what comes next. I can't carry on reading this story with those goo goo eyes staring at me. Well, don't look at me then. <laughs> I'm lady. If you're lady, you lady, glass offer. <laughs> quiet, clicker. Quiet, please. Be quiet, little glass offer. Quiet, quiet. What's the matter with him? I don't think he recognizes you, Basil. Doesn't it? It's me, Bazzy. Shut it in a boot shoot. <laughs> quiet. So sorry. Please continue. <laughs> Shut up! Be quiet! As Basil spoke, Silly dog. there was What's a sudden clatter you? of hooves along the narrow We're not street. Coming here again. Look I'll out, sir! Cried Sailor Harris. You wait As a handsome cab drawn by a frantically galloping horse 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 tore down on them from out of the fog. Silly little and dog. That's all we've got time what? for. What have we got time for? You see that? You made me miss the story. <laughs> Silly dog. <laughs> Don't forget to listen next week to another thrilling episode of. Bulldog Basil, Secret Service Man. God, it's a swindle, that's what it is. You wait till you get home. Basil Go. faces danger as to Milcom House he goes. A great big galloping jeet he's going to stamp upon his toes. Bulldog Basil's reputation everybody knows. Villains used to tremble when they heard his name. Fighting England's enemies, Bulldog Basil played his part. Now he's going to get one over by a runaway horse and cart. We all know Basil's motto. Yes, we've learned it off by heart. Stand up for England, home and duty. He was a brave, brave man. <laughs> Bulldog Basil, a secret <laughs> service man. In <laughs> India and <laughs> Africa, in China and Japan. They knew his reputation, he was a superstar. <laughs> and the enemies of England heard his battle cry. 